today we have the corollary corollary 1.18 says that let z equal to a be an isolated singularity of a function f and its uh, lorentz series expansion in an of a0 r is given then z equal to a is a removable singularity if and only if a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus 1 z equal to a is a pole of order m if and only if a minus m equal to 0 and a n is equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus of m plus 1 z equal to a is an essential singularity if and only if a n equal to 0 for infinitely many negative integers n so first we will prove a so to prove a what we need to show is it is a, a is a removable singularity if and only if a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus 1 so suppose that a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus 1 and we have f of z has Lorentz series expansion summation minus infinity to infinity a n into z minus a whole per n which I can write summation minus infinity to minus 1 a n z minus a whole power n plus summation 0 to infinity a n z minus a whole power n a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus 1 so this is going to be 0 so we can write it as summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a whole power n and I call this term as g of z so I get f of z is equal to g of z where g of z is an analytic function in b of a r so we have proven that there exists an analytic function g of z where g is from uh, b of a r to z uh, c such that f of z equal to uh, g of z g of z is an analytic function for 0 less than modulus of z minus a less than r so this implies that z equal to a is a removable singularity removable singularity Now, uh, we prove the converse that is uh, suppose uh, z equal to a is a removable singularity we are taking. z equal to a is a removable singularity. It implies that there exists a g of z, g from b of a r, analytic function g of z from b of a r into c such that f of z will be equal to g of z for 0 less than modulus of z minus a less than r. So, uh, this must be equal. And we have G of Z is analytic. So, G of Z is analytic in this 0 less than modulus of Z minus A less than R. So, it has a power series expansion of the form G of Z equal to summation N equal to 0 to infinity A N into Z minus A whole power N. And we have, a, this is equal to F of Z. And already we have F of Z has Lorentz series expansion summation minus infinity to infinity n into z minus a whole power n. These things, are, these f of z and g of z are equal. So, we must have a n is equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus 1. So, this is the proof for a. Now, we will prove b. So, what does b says? b says that, let me show, b says that, z equal to a is a pole of order m if and only if a minus m is not equal to 0 and a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus of m plus 1. So, we are taking from this. Suppose that a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus of m plus 1. We can write f of z has Lorentz series expansion summation minus infinity to infinity a n into z minus a whole per n which I can write summation minus infinity to minus of m plus 1 a n into z minus a whole power n plus summation n equal to minus m to infinity a n into z minus a whole per n and we have taken a n equal to 0 for n less than or equal to minus m plus 1 so if this term get uh, 0 this sum gets 0. So, we get it is equal to summation n equal to minus m to infinity a n into z minus a whole power n. 
Now consider f of z into z minus a whole power m. So it will be like summation n equal to minus m to infinity a n into z minus a whole power n into z minus a whole power m. So how I uh, how the sum will be? It will be like a minus m z minus a whole power m into z minus a whole power m plus a minus m plus one z minus a whole power m plus one. Z minus a whole power m plus a minus m plus two. Z minus a whole power m plus two. Z minus a whole power m plus etc. So how it look likes? It looks like uh, uh, it look likes uh, such that it is this f of z into f of z into z minus a whole power m. Has a uh, Laurent expansion, Laurent expansion, which has no negative powers of negative powers of z minus a. And we check this; it is clear that z minus a have no negative powers. So, by part a, part a, we have proved that. Uh, it, uh, it it will be uh, set uh, set equal to a is a singular uh, it's a removable uh, singularity uh, if and only if uh, a n equal to zero for n less than or equal to minus one so we can say that it is it is a removable singular it's set equal to it has a uh, removable singularity so by part a z minus a whole power m into f of z has a removable singularity. Removable singularity, implying that f has a pole of order m at z equal to a. Because z minus a all power m into f of z has a removable singularity, implying f has a pole of order at m equal at uh, z equal to a. Converse part is by retracing these steps. Uh, Uh, retracing these steps, that is, we are taking that f as a pole of order m at a z equal to a, then z minus a whole power m f of z has a removable singularity, which will imply this. So, it in in the reverse order, we we get we get the converse part. Now, we are going to prove c. To prove c, it is easy. That is, uh, c part. It says that. Z equal to a is an essential singularity if and only if a n is not equal to zero for infinitely many negative integers n. So suppose that Z equal to a is an essential singularity, essential singularity, then it is neither removable nor a pole. So from equation uh, sorry from uh, a and b part we have proven. Uh, uh, it is clear that uh, we must have a n is not equal to zero for infinitely many uh, negative integers n. Negative integers n. Now uh, we have a theorem. Theorem is Cassiotti Weier stress theorem. Weier stress theorem. Theorem states that if F has an essential singularity, essential singularity at z equal to a, then for all delta greater than zero, f of function. Uh, this is function f of an endless a zero delta. It will be equal to see this. We need to show. So proof. Suppose f is analytic in an a zero R. So it must be shown that if c and epsilon greater than zero are given, then for each delta greater than zero, we can find a z in c with Modulus of z minus a less than delta and modulus of f of z minus c is less than epsilon. 
so we are assuming that it is false uh, it does not holds then uh, we will arrive at a contradiction so so assume it to be fail then uh, there is in uh, there is a c in c and epsilon greater than 0 assuming to be fail assuming to be fail we get c in c and epsilon greater than 0 such that modulus of f of z minus c will be greater than or equal to epsilon greater than or equal to epsilon for all z in g for all z in g for g i have taken g is and a 0 delta thus limit z tends to a modulus of f of z minus c by modulus of z minus a will be equal to infinity implying that f of z minus c divided by z minus a has a pole at a z equal to a this we get this from just from the definition so m is the order of the pole m is the order of this pole order of this pole so limit z tends to a modulus of z minus a whole power m plus 1 modulus of f of z minus c will be equal to 0 we have already studied this uh, so here uh, now i am taking modulus of z minus a whole power m plus 1 into modulus of f of z which i can write it as modulus of z minus a whole power m plus 1 modulus of f of z minus c plus c which will be less than or equal to modulus of z minus a whole power m plus 1 modulus of f of z minus c plus modulus of z minus a whole power m plus 1 modulus of c so here we have got this to be equal to 0 so from this inequality we get limit z tends to a modulus of z minus a whole power m plus 1 modulus of f of z will be equal to 0 since m is greater than or equal to 1 implying that f of z into z minus a whole power m has a removable singularity removable singularity at z equal to a but we have taken that a is a uh, z equal to a is a essential singularity it cannot be uh, removable so but we got it as a removable singularity so this contradiction uh, completes the proof thank you